All right, well, welcome to everyone in the Vine Church family. Good morning to those of you watching it in the morning. Good evening to those of you who are watching it in the evening. Or good night for those of you who are watching this at nighttime. This is our July 5th uh, message for our family parties. Yes. Welcome to Sunday, July 5th. Uh, whether you are having a family party as a part of our church family and you're in one of the homes or you're here at the building with uh, our group here out in the hallway or wherever you guys are meeting, or if you are simply with your family at home having your own family party, I want to say welcome to this morning. I want to say I love you. I care about you so much. I'm excited for this morning to kind of bring this talk into your home on a weekend where we celebrate our freedom. Uh, before we jump into today's talk, you can always go over to vinetrustful.com. That's where you can fill out your connection card or you can give. You guys know this. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for being a part of this church family, a part of this community, a part of this city, and being a blessing to other people. I appreciate you. I love you. And I'm pumped for today. If you have your Bibles or if you are uh, with, you know, sitting around with your family, you got your smartphones, go ahead and open those up. We're going to be in Acts chapter 12 today. Acts chapter 12. The title of today's talk is freedom. Now, I am wearing my red, white, and blue shirt because it is July 4th weekend, and it's the weekend where we celebrate the freedom from tyranny. Uh, we celebrate that our country declared freedom back in 1776. Won't go over history lesson, history lesson there, but it, we, it, when the Declaration of Independence came forth and it declared our freedom, uh, from uh, Great Britain, and it was freedom from tyranny, from oppression. So this morning, we're going to talk about freedom. We're not, talk, not going to talk about a physical freedom that we experience in our nation, but we're going to talk about the type of freedom that Jesus came to give to each one of us. See, here's the thing. Jesus came, died, and rose from the dead for our freedom. Jesus came he died, and he rose from the dead for our freedom. He came to set us free from our sin. He came to set us free from our hurts, our habits, and our hang-ups. He came to set us free from the prisons of our sins, the prisons of our emotional scars. And he came to set us free from the prison of our own desires. See, we live in what we call the already but not yet. What that means is we are already saved, yet we are still being saved. We are already free, but we are still being set free. We're still walking in new levels of freedom. You know, we are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer slaves to fear, yet we still have things that plague us in this life. We are headed towards perfection, yet we know that we will never reach perfection until one day when we enter into eternity in heaven. So we live in the already, the sacrifice has been paid by Jesus on the cross. He came, he died, and he rose from the dead so that we could be set free. And we are free, yet we still live in the not yet. There are all kinds of things that we are still bound by and bound uh, to that Jesus wants to set us free from those. Now, in Acts chapter 12, we have one of these stories that uh, Brooke and I have loved for years. We've talked about it often, and I'll get to it later on, uh, why we love it so much. But I'm going to start reading in verse 6. Have your Bibles, Acts chapter 12, verse 6. It'll be here on the screen next to me. I'm doing my own slides today. There's no Maddie in the back. It's just me. So uh, I'll probably look at the screen to make sure I'm getting it right. All right, here we go. Verse 6. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly, there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. See, right before this, in chapter 12, James has been killed, and now Peter is in prison. And he's in prison, and suddenly there's a bright light in the cell. An angel comes, all right? The angel struck him on the side to awaken him, 
and said, I, I, I love that. The angel struck him on the side. He's like, hey, get up, Peter. So Peter must have been, you know, a deep sleeper, kind of like myself and so many of you out there. All right, he struck him on the side to awake him. He said, quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrists. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. The angel said, quick, get up. And immediately the chains that he was bound, he, he was bound to a guard on his left and another guard on his right. And those chains, uh, the guards that he was bound to, those chains fell off. He said, get dressed, put on your sandals. We're getting out of here, all right? So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time, Peter thought it was a vision. He did not realize what was, that what was happening was real, like it was actually happening. He thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard posts, okay? They passed the first guard posts. Peter still thinks it's a vision. They passed the second guard posts. Peter still thinks it's a vision. They came to the iron gate leading to the city, and this gate opened all by itself, all by itself. The gate opens. So they passed through and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left him. All right? The angel suddenly left him. And this is when Peter comes to his senses. Peter came to his senses. It's really true. He said, the Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. All right, verse 12. When he realized this, all right, so Peter is now, he has walked out of prison, chains had fallen off, walks past the first guard, walks past the second guard, iron gate opens on its own, and now he's, he, he's out, he's free. He realizes this was not a vision, this was not some dream, this is real, this has actually happened. When he realized this, he goes to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. He knocked at the door in the gate. A servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. Now, this is why this is one of our uh, Brooke and I's favorite stories. We talk about it often. We love this story. We think it's hilarious. Peter shows up at the door, and the girl, Rhoda, she's so excited, okay, that she doesn't even open the door. She just leaves Peter standing there, and she goes and tells everyone else. And then look what everyone else says. You are out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. All right? They said, this cannot be Peter. It must be his angel. First, they're like, girl, you are out of your mind. You are crazy. Peter's not here. We saw Peter in prison. We saw Peter be taken away, placed into prison, and he is locked up. There's no way he's free. And she says, it is, it is him. So their natural conclusion is, well, he must have died. And this is his angel because it's definitely not Peter. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. Imagine yourself as Peter. You've walked out of this jail cell miraculously, you're set free, you go to your friend's house, and they don't let you in. So he just keeps knocking. When they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Tell James. Oh, it didn't go. There we go. Oh, oh, no, I missed one. Go back. Go back. No, wrong way. Oh, my goodness. This is what I get for doing my own slides. All right, tell James and the other brothers what had happened, he said. And then he went to another place. At dawn, there was a great commotion among the soldiers about what had happened to Peter. Of course, there was a great commotion. Peter was in jail the last time they saw him, and now he is gone. All right? So this story is a story of freedom. Peter is in prison. He's in chains, and he is set free by this angel. So we're going to look at this story, and we're going to look at some parallel ways how Jesus wants to lead us towards freedom. So number one, if you are taking notes uh, today, if you are in one of the family parties or even with your own family, uh, I'm going to encourage you to discuss a couple things at the end of today. Uh, so be ready for that. Uh, but I'm going to discuss a couple things uh, and just what's how, how Jesus maybe has led you towards freedom and all that. So if you're taking notes, you want to take notes to, to be ready for the discussion, you can do that. Anyways, number one, Jesus leads us. Well, that sounded weird. Jesus leads us, you know, Jesus leads us by the hand on journeys of freedom. Jesus wants to lead you by the hand on journeys of freedom. See, we have things that continue to trap us, and Jesus wants to set us free. 
and he wants to lead us by the hand on journeys of freedom. No one wants you to be free more than Jesus. As much as you want to be free from some of the things that, that, are, that, are, that are keeping you locked up, and believe me, I have my own share of these, all right? There's all kinds of stuff I want to be free of that I am pray that God helps me with, uh, all kinds of stuff. I pray for more, well, I won't go into my stuff, you know, this is, this is for all of us. Jesus wants to lead us by the hand. No one wants us to be more free than Jesus. You know, last week, we took our family to the beach. And we stayed at this, uh, the place we were staying was across the main street. We were in Gulf Shores from, from the beach. So in order to get from where we were staying to the beach, we had to walk across this highway, basically. And so we get to the highway, and the rule was that all of uh, my nieces were there, we, that all the nieces and then all the littles, like we, in our family we call, we have the littles and the bigs, all the littles have to hold hands as we cross the street. But... If your kids are anything like mine or my brothers, uh, all right, my nieces, then they are fiercely independent. They really like doing things on their own, and they are fiercely independent. And so we told them, when we get to the road, you have to hold our hand because it's dangerous crossing the street. And then we have this discussion. Well, why do I have to hold your hand? Well, why doesn't the older kids have to hold your hand? Why do they have to, you know, and all this, because they are fiercely independent, and they don't want to be led by the hand. As human beings, so often we are fiercely independent. We don't want to be led by the hand. We want to do it our own. But when Jesus Jesus is leading us by the hand, there are many miracles all along the way. See, we're saying, God, show me what you want me to do, and I'm going to go and do it. And and, and God so many times is saying, "Let, let me just lead you by the hand. Just take my hand. Take my hand and walk with me. And when Jesus leads us by the hand, there are many miracles all along the way. See, Peter didn't realize it was, it, it, was, uh, it was real. He thought it was a vision. But he walked by the first, well, the first miracle, the chains fall off his wrist. It's a little mini miracle, all right? The second one, he passes by the first guards and they don't seize him and throw him back into jail. Then he passes by the second set of guards. They don't seize him and throw him back into jail. Then he gets to the iron gate, and it opens up by itself. Every step of the way, there are these many miracles. Peter didn't have to exert his physical strength at all. All he had to do was follow. All he had to do was simply follow. Now, there are prisons in our hearts that we need freedom from. There are different times and different seasons where we need freedom from different things, and some of those things are, have kept us locked up, have held us back for years and years. Sometimes we need to be set free from pride. And we want to maybe do it on our own, which is in itself is prideful. And Jesus says, if you want to be set free, take me by the hand, and I will lead you towards freedom. We need to be set free from anxiety, from worry. Maybe we need to be set free from stress or loneliness, insecurity. Maybe we need to be set free from bitterness or greed or even shame. We've been carrying something around with us and we feel deep shame because of what we have done in the past or what has been done to us in the past. And it's time for us to walk in freedom to not live in shame, to not be riddled with guilt and shame or greed, insecurity and bitterness, but to allow Jesus to lead us to freedom. Number one, Jesus leads us by the hand on journeys of freedom. Number two, the second thing that we see in this story is we often don't realize what God is doing until it's done. We often don't realize what God is doing until it's done. Peter thought this whole thing was just a vision. And he didn't realize that it wasn't just a vision until it was complete. But our God is faithful. Jesus desires for us to be free. And if we allow him to lead us, he is faithful and he will lead us towards freedom. 
See, we don't have to understand all that God is doing to know that God is working. And we often don't realize what God is doing until it's already over and it's complete. See, Peter could have stopped the angel and asked for an explanation. Now, I don't know what would have taken place, but I can only imagine if Peter's in the jail cell, the angel appears and the chains fall off and the angel says, follow me. And Peter says, hey, can you, can you explain to me what's taking place? Is this a vision? Is it like, what's going on? What, what's the purpose of this? If Peter would have caused the angel to stop, I can only imagine the angel would have turned to Peter and said, look, I can stop and I can explain it to you or we can just be free, all right? Or you can just, be, you can just follow me. You can just uh, work with me, listen to my instructions. You can do what I'm asking you to do, and then we're going to be set. We're, we're going to walk out, and you are going to be set free. I think so many times we, we desire for God to explain every single little step he's leading us on instead of just in faith, open-handed, saying, all right, God, I'll lead, I will allow you to lead me where you want me to go. We often don't realize what God is doing until it's done. Number three. It says number two. It's actually number three. My bad. I can't change it right now, but this is number three. So we'll just cover that up. It's actually number three. It may take time for our friends and family to recognize our freedom. It may take some time for our family and our friends to recognize our freedom. You know, Brooke and I, like I said, we both love this part of the story where Rhoda does not, she, she doesn't open the door. She just leaves Peter there. She doesn't even open the door. And then all, we talked about it a minute ago, then all the others didn't even believe it was really Peter. They saw Peter in prison. They had a hard time believing that his freedom was real. See, when we have uh, hurts, habits, hangups, things that uh, personality quirks or, 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 or uh, uh, sin that we've carried with us or whatever it may be, uh, the people around us, they see those things, they know those things, and sometimes it takes them a lot of time to recognize that we are now free, to recognize that God has been working, us, working on us, molding us, shaping us, forming us to be more like Jesus, and it takes them some time to see our freedom. But what happens? We read it. It was in orange. Peter keeps knocking. Peter keeps knocking. It may take our friends and family time to recognize our freedom, and that's okay. The first thing I want us to know is that's okay. It's okay. If our spouse or our children or our brothers or our sisters or our close friends or cousins or family or whatever, if they've known us for an extended period of time and now God is working on us and he's forming us and he's changing us, he's molding us into something better, into something even more like him, and it might take them some time to see that progress, to see what God is doing, and that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. If they need some time, it's okay. Sometimes we're impatient with our family and friends and those around us because we know that we, we've been walking towards freedom or now we're set free and we, we're living differently. They're going to come around, but we just need to keep living in our newfound freedom. Understand it might take them some time and that's okay, but we just need to keep living in our newfound freedom. Peter just keeps knocking. Now, what does freedom look like? What does freedom in the body of Christ as a Jesus follower, what does it look like? Well, the first and foremost, it looks like eternity in heaven. We are set free from all of our sins. We live in the already but not yet. And thankfully, God doesn't require us to reach perfection before we enter heaven. He doesn't require us to attain some uh, sense of, of, uh, uh, of Christ-likeness before we enter into heaven. Jesus paid the price for us once for all time. And he, uh, he, we were ushered into heaven because of what he has done, not because of our good works. We've talked about this before, though, uh, that God is much more concerned about who we are becoming than what we do. And so part of this, what does freedom look like? It's all about who we're becoming. Are we becoming more like Jesus? In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. What does freedom look like? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
in self-control. What does freedom look like? What freedom looks like is the fruits of the Spirit operating in their fullness in and through each one of us. What does freedom look like? Being so full of love for other people. Where selfishness is thrown to the side because we are loving towards others. What does freedom look like? There's a joy that surpasses understanding, a joy that is beyond comprehension, a joy that is not circumstantial, where we can walk through the most difficult circumstances, the most stressful, the most uh, agonizing pain and suffering, and we can still have a joy that is unspeakable. What does freedom look like? It looks like peace, that we can be in the most anxious and fearful of times, when a pandemic is going on, where there's civil uh, unrest happening, where there's all kinds of things that need to be uprooted are being uprooted, and then some stuff that needs to stay uh, the same has, has not been staying the same, and then the pandemic, and all this, just like, in these very turbulent times, we can have a peace. What does freedom look like? It looks like peace in the midst of chaos. What does freedom look like? It looks like patience, being able to be patient and wait on God to move. It looks like goodness, goodness. It looks like faithfulness, perseverance, faithfulness, endurance, continuing on the right path. It looks like gentleness. What is freedom looks like gentleness. When I look at Jesus, when I look at the man of Jesus Christ, the the 100% God, 100% man that came down to earth and gave us a model for living on this earth, we see an incredibly gentle God, an incredibly gentle man. What does freedom look like? Gentleness. What does it look like? Self-control. Freedom looks like self-control. This is what freedom looks like whenever we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. These are called fruits of the Spirit. Galatians chapter five, verse 22. They're called fruits of the Spirit because these are the fruit that come out of our lives whenever we are following Jesus and we're allowing him to lead us by the hand. When we are allowing the Holy Spirit inside to work on us, to mold us and shape us, that's where freedom comes from. So many times we think uh, about freedom in the confines of physical space. But true freedom in God isn't about a physical space. It's about a spiritual place. It's about a spiritual, uh, a spiritual place where God sets us free that no matter what physical place, no matter what's happening around us, we can be at peace. We can have self-control. We can be faithful. We can continue to be gentle and loving and kind and be full of joy. So what are we to do when we look at this story? What did, what did Peter do? He kept following. What did Peter do? He kept listening. What did Peter do? He was fully present in the moment. What can we do to be led towards freedom? We keep pursuing Jesus. We don't stop pursuing Jesus. Even when it feels difficult, when it feels hard, when it's confusing, we don't stop pursuing Jesus. We keep following Jesus his voice. We keep taking those next right steps. We keep taking that next right steps, that next right step. We put one foot in front of the other and we keep moving forward. What do we do? We are fully present in the moment, fully present in the moment not trying to analyze and figure out the whole plan and what God's doing and, and, and what, what does this mean for this and how does that mean for that? But we be present in this moment. Okay, God, right here, right now, what is it that you're asking me? What are you leading me towards today? So this morning, this afternoon, this evening, this night, whatever time it is for you as you're watching this, uh, I want you to discuss a couple things, all right, in one of our family parties. All right, I want you to discuss. I want you to sit around with your family, your church family, or your physical family, and think and talk about freedom. I'd like you to discuss today's talk and uh, discuss maybe some things that stuck out to you. Maybe some things that God was showing you. You know, my prayer as I give these talks to you, as I prepare these messages, my prayer is always not that you hear from me, but that you hear from God. So what was God talking to you about? 
What was he speaking to you about? Maybe what was something you hadn't thought of before, something you hadn't heard of, or maybe something you've heard a thousand times, but it just, you felt it impressed. It, it stuck out in your mind. What are those things? And then maybe spend some time discussing what has Jesus set you free from in the past? I think it's wonderful when we sit around as a family and we talk about the things that Jesus has set us free from. You know, I could tell you story after story of the things that Jesus has set me free from. How he has led me to, uh, in different seasons of my life, and set me free from anger, set me free from greed of discontentment, and how he set me free from stress. And he can tell you even now the things that uh, Jesus is continuing, continuing to set me free from right now. What is Jesus what has he set you free from? But also you can discuss maybe what is he currently setting you free from? What is Jesus working on in your heart? I can tell you those as well from me. Like I'm not perfect, not even close to perfect. We say it here all the time. You guys know this. There's no perfect people allowed. And that includes me. I am nowhere near perfect. Jesus is working on me. What is Jesus setting you free from now? What has he set you free from in the past? Let me pray for you, friends. I love you so much. Uh, we'll be back in normal atmosphere Sunday, July 12th. Uh, those that are meeting in the building with us each week will be here for that. Those of you continuing to watch at home during this season of social distance and COVID and all that stuff, uh, we'll be back at just regular time, regular stuff uh, on Sunday, July 12th. I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for every single person in our church family that is uh, watching this to hear and receive from you. I pray that you would speak to their hearts now, that you would comfort them and love them, that you would show them that you desire for them to be free and that you will lead us by the hand towards freedom if we just keep trusting, if we just keep listening, if we just keep following you. I pray a blessing over my church family. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you so much. I'll see you soon.